Hey guys, Eric here with you again. Uh, I'm going to be trying to do a quick project video for you, a little Mother's Day thing. Uh, I recently scrolled a uh, poplar and walnut Mother's Day plaque uh, saying Happy Mother's Day. It has a nice floral design on one side of it. So what I'm going to try and do is take the uh, Happy Mother's Day script from the part of, from part of that pattern and I'm going to be putting it onto a uh, picture frame and doing it as a gift for my mother. So, we'll see how that goes. I'll show you guys the process that I go through. And here we go. So this is the uh, plaque that I'm stealing from. This one right here. I probably showed it in my new phone video, but not for very long. It's half inch thick poplar with a uh, dark walnut backer. And, uh, yeah. I'm taking the script side of it, the the words of it, and the little the little heart here, and I'm going to be putting it. Sorry, move the camera. I'm going to be putting it on this picture frame with a heart shaped cutout. What I've already done is I've already taped the frame to put the pattern on it. Now all I have to do is uh, glue the pattern and then tape over that and then drill all the the uh, starter holes. So glue. My kingdom for some... oh, pfft, it's right in front of my face. Now, what I mean by the uh, clear packing tape, as you can see the uh, tape roller over there, is uh, my father and I, we use this uh, Scotch brand clear 2-inch wide packing tape. And uh, this stuff is perfect for holding down scroll patterns. Uh, basically, put a layer of it on, this, on the uh, wood that you're working on, as you can see from the reflective side. Uh, once you get that done, then uh, use some contact cement uh, spray adhesive, and we use this 3M Super 77 because it seems to work best for us. Now, I mentioned the names, the names and the brands of all the products that we use, not because I'm sponsored by them, I wish, but because that way it'll help other scrollers out there if it's something that they never thought about using. So it gives them a new product to check out. Now, just a couple of quick spritz. Whoops, helps to point the glue in the right direction. Now, what I like to do is I give it a couple of seconds so that it's not still uh, fluid, so that it gets a little bit tacky. And then I put it on, on the project. Alright, so, before the glue dries completely, Go ahead and slap the uh, pattern onto the piece here. Now this is one of my famous, or infamous, uh, $1 picture frames that I buy over at Michael's because they have them in several different shapes and sizes and all that. And um, it's a nice way to have a, a cheap pit bit of pre-made material that you can work with to um, add your own flair to, your own touches. So, the pattern's on. Quick tape up. And let's see. Basically what I'm just doing is I'm label labeling tape over the pattern now that it's glued down. So that when I'm cutting these lines, these thin lines that are next to each other, the uh, pattern doesn't lift off and uh, flap around and be hard to deal with. So, Leo. Yes, I'm arguing with inanimate objects again. Are you really surprised? Got that, and then I just have a thin spot to cover with some clear tape and we'll be good to go. Yeah, I don't suggest using the clear tape to completely cover your pattern because you would use a ton of it and it's not as strong as the packing tape. It tends to tends to rip very easily. So I just use it if it's covering like the outside edge of a pattern where I'm not going to be doing a lot of cutting inside the tape. So, Alright, so that part of it is done. I just need to drill my starter holes here, there, and everywhere, and I'll be right back. 
So, since this is a pattern that has such thin lines, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this, it's going to be hard to see it, this tiny little uh, number 60 drill. Now, that drill is drill bit is only uh, 40 thousandths of an inch in diameter, but it's just big enough to uh, drill all the starter holes for the number 3 blades that I like to use. This wood really that warped. Oof. Oh, it's gonna make for some some fun scroll sawing. This thing's gonna rock, rock all over the place. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, you're not gonna be able to see anything with my big mitts in the way. But um yeah. that simple. So, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see them very well. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, not really. Anyways, all my starter holes are drilled. You can't really see them in this lighting, unfortunately, but uh, they're there. So, I'll bring you guys in with me. We'll get on, jump on the scroll saw and start working on this guy. Now, some of the other projects that we're working on are these little, uh, cedar signs. Basically just little cutout signs that nice messages for your mom and things like that. I'm gonna actually need to finish the one that I have on the saw before I get going with the um, picture frame for my mother. So um, I'll hammer this one out because I'm almost done cutting it out. I just need to finish underneath the word rock and I'm done so let's see if I can position you guys somewhere where you're not in my way <laughs> now this is going to be quite loud because I'm using a large number seven blade to cut through the uh, double stacked wood so hopefully it's not too bad for you thing I added to the scroll saw, the way I was able to turn it off without having my hands up here on the switch, is I uh, added a foot pedal to the saw, which is a suggestion of my father, and I love it. It just makes life so much easier. You have perfect control over your pieces while you go to turn the saw off, so you don't have to worry about anything jumping because you lifted your hands off. Now, these signs, uh, the reason the wood looks so weird and all mucked up is because it's actually uh, old cedar fence board that we're repurposing to make these signs. So we'll, sa we'll, we'll sand off all the old paint and the patina and the wood that's underneath is what's going to be visible and then we'll clear over that and you have a nice little uh, freestanding sign uh, to give as a gift. So, alright then, so these are done. Well until they're sanded anyways. So I have three more stacks like that to do and uh, once I'm done with those I'll work on the picture frame. So see you guys in a few minutes. 
going to be putting on my fav my new favorite blade, the uh, Pegasus number no. three R. I love the. I also like the fact that uh, you can feed blades in through the top on this saw. That makes things a lot faster. My big old hands are going to get in the way, but that's nothing new. All right then. Normally pieces just pop out, ouch, as I stab myself. Normally pieces just pop out after you've cut them out like that. Um, this one's deciding to argue a little bit. There we go. Eh, as you can see, it's it's a fairly thick wood, so these delicate pieces that I'm cutting out aren't going to be too much of a problem. Let's see, now I need to clean that up, up here. is it's an embellishment in the font but it doesn't look like it's supposed to be there but I'll oh, clean that, that up no problem Now normally I don't like to lift the uh, piece while the blade's running, but in this case I was using it to clear a piece of wood out of the, the bottom of the cut, so. <sighs> Moving on. Let's see, what do I want to cut first? Probably want to cut this way first. What is Guru or who is Guru? The conscience within you. Now I know you're probably wondering what the heck am I doing? I'm missing the lines completely. Well, that's because the P's that are in this font really don't look like P's to me. Doing a little freehand scrolling just to clean them up. Actually, a couple of issues I have with this font and the way they designed it that make it just a little bit too uh, fragile. So I put my own spin on it just to make things a little bit cleaner.
Okay. Now here comes the fun part. Now that I've cut way outside the lines, now I've got to come back and have it actually look decent. I was afraid of that. That's fine, it can be fixed. This is what happens when you experiment. Sometimes it works, sometimes it really doesn't. Yeah, that's not the safest way to remove pieces, because sometimes you can break something you never intended to. Now these little plywood frames that I get, these uh, $1 frames, uh, were never designed to be scrolled on, so the fact that I can get them to work makes me pretty happy. Alright, well, I'll finish scrolling this out and uh, get back to you guys. All sorts of background noise as I continue along with this project. Uh, already have Happy and Mothers cut out. Now I just have to cut out the heart and the word day and the scrolling side of things is done. Then I'm going to uh, sand this, get everything nice and happy on it, and pick a stain. Because this, this wood, well, it has a nice grain. It's a very boring color, so I need to fix that. We have a heart. Let's see if there's any fuzzies to clean up in here. And just a little bit. Now just shaving. Uh, since it is plywood, it has a tendency on a sharp point to uh, break off down in the cut. So I just like to clean it up, make sure it has a nice finish to it. And we're down to the home stretch on the scrolling, so I think I'll finish this up and show you guys oh, how it looks. Yay! And done. Okay. So. Ta-da! Okay, so that's done. Now I get to do the fun part of peeling the uh, tape out of all that script. So, uh, I'll get to getting on that and I'll post this the uh, finished version of this project on my next project video on Dan Snow's Wooden Toys after I've stained it and cleared it and gotten and decided if I'm going to put a backer behind the script because it is now completely, as you can see, transparent. So, anyways guys, as always, more to come.